Now let's solve a problem. The problem is this. You have butane as a substrate and you're adding chlorine H mu. Now looking at the reagent and looking at the substrate you need to identify that there is this photolytic substitution of butane because you know the reaction. Now the question is you write down all the possible products and uh, you also give their percentage. Like suppose there will be two products A and B. So first of all you identify those two products and you give me the percentage of those two products based upon the theory we have studied up till now. So let's do the first thing first. Let's identify the products and then we'll come to their percentage. The products would now I'm not going to write the whole mechanism. That mechanism I have given you for one and all time. You have to master that mechanism and use it directly. So don't move ahead unless you have you know that reactions very well. The mechanism of the reaction very well. Now I, I, what I'll do, I know that this heat breaks it, you have Cl dot produced, that Cl dot comes, abstract a hydrogen that alkyl free radical go and react with another chlorine molecule to attach, get attached with a Cl atom. So that Cl atom can go anywhere. Now this one and this one is same. They are symmetric and this two and this two are the similar position. They are two kinds of carbon atom. Two degree, one degree. And they are two kinds of hydrogen which are attached to those two kinds of carbon. So carbon, first kind is on carbon one and the second kind is on carbon two. So there are two possibilities. There will be there will be two products. One of the product would be one chlorobutane. I'm not drawing hydrogen. I'm lazy. And the other product would be two chlorobutane. Right. So the f we have identified successfully these two products. So we have fetched half number. To fetch another half of the number we have to identify their percentage now let me teach you how you would find the percentage and the next problem you should you shall solve by yourself now in order to solve uh, in order to get the percentage what you have to do is you have to find uh, let me give you this formula number of hydrogen into reactivity tendency if you get these two products that will give you the effective reactivity rate on that site number of hydrogen on that site and the reactivity tendency on that site if you multiply these two factors this is the this is the kinetic factor and this is the thermodynamic factor if you clap these two together that will give you the effective reaction reactivity on that site right and in order to find the ratio of A and B, let's divide the number of hydrogen and the reactivity tendency product for both sides. So if I am going to write the product for site number one, the so site number one have six hydrogen because there are two sites like site number one and three on each side. So there are six hydrogen that are similar. And the reactivity tendency, since it is chlorine and the, based upon the previous ratio which I have given you, for one degree you have tendency as one right so this is will be for the product A now if you have to get to the product B then there are two sides of product B and there are correspondingly four hydrogen so number of hydrogen is four and tendency here because it is two degree is 3.8 based upon the previously given data so these, is, these are the ratio of the reactivity rate for these two sides and that reactivity rate will give us the corresponding ratio of the product. So this comes out as 6 by 15.2 I guess 15.2 yes 15.2 6 by 15.2 so to see that this gives the ratio of A is to B so A is to B are present in the ratio of 6 is to 15.2 so to get the percentage of A you have to get the reactivity for A by total reactivity in 200 this will give you percentage of A now if you do the calculation 
this will come out as 28% so the rest of A is 28% so the rest of B you can use the same formula for like you can do 15.2 by 6 plus 15.2 or you can subtract it by 100 and get 72% as B so this is this kind of numerical problem you can expect and this is we have reached to the pinnacle of the reaction this is the toughest thing that you can get out of this reaction right so this 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 you must be able to solve okay now i can give you a similar kind of problem and you should try out yourself now if i give you another same reaction the question remains same again i ask you to identify the products and their percentage then again there are two kinds of sites one degree one degree one degree and this is three degree so there will be two two possible products and those products let me quickly write you have a chlorine on three degree carbon so this is one possible product another product is that chlorine goes to any num any carbon all are similar doesn't matter on which carbon it goes so let me draw it here right so this is another product so now you can find the percentage using the same formula and you should do it all by yourself and when you do it uh, you will find that the this product in which chlorine has been attached to one degree comes out as 64 percent and this comes out at 36 percent now if you don't do solve this question by yourself don't expect yourself to be solving any kind of similar question in the exam right so don't betray yourself don't deceive the purpose of watching this video do solve all by yourself and this is very similar to the one I have shown you previously I have given you the answers you should match the answer by solving right so this is the kind of question that you can expect so now what we have done is we have done the mechanism and we have solved we have discussed the reactivity of different halogens and different substrates right all right now let's move ahead and look what this reaction what is left out to be learned now another thing we haven't discussed uh, iodine when I gave you the ratio of reactivity I gave you only for chlorine and bromine I haven't given you I have not given you for uh, iodine free radical the reason is iodine's reaction is very slow and uh, it is all it is reversible when I uh, one have to write a reaction like this we use this reversibility sign you replace one hydrogen by iodine form a HI with another iodine atom but this is reversible this is reversible because the reason is in the first step when you break iodine you have two iodine free radical right in the chain propagation step when you abstract hydrogen from this ethane for the first time then you create a free radical on this alkene and you form a bond HI now HI bond is a very weak bond because hydrogen belongs to the first period iodine belongs to the fifth period there is a huge difference in size there is very ineffective overlapping of this hydrogen orbital or hydrogen's orbital with the iodine's orbital so one is a tiny little atom having tiny orbital another uh, will have a huge p orbital so the effective overlapping would be very less because electronic density will be all around in the left of the volume electronic percentage of iodine's electronic density in this small volume compared to the size of the whole orbital will be very less so the effective overlapping would be very less so this bond going to be very very weak alright this is a weak bond so the tendency for the reaction to go ahead would be less so that makes the reaction reversible rather it comes back and gives you back the iodide iodine free radical because iodine being very less electronegative is not so goddamn unstable to bear that deficiency of electron it can stay there right so iodine has a problem that reaction becomes irreversible it comes back so to avoid that problem remember when I taught you Colby's electrolysis 
when I ta told you that when you give heat then you have a negative charge on this alkyl part and CO2 tries to escape but this negative charge because it is on carbon is highly unstable so there is a tendency for the reaction to come backward so the only way out is to avoid the reaction to come backward is to you abstract one of the product suppose there is no CO2 then the reaction can't come backward right so we, what we did is we added lime there to make it calcium carbonate now there is no carbon dioxide the reaction cannot come backward so we don't you have to use the reversibility arrow right so this is one of the technique suppose the reaction has less tendency to go forward you start abstracting one of the product and that encourages the reaction to move ahead because there is no option you cannot come backward 